Hey there guys, today I have another device review for you. I'll try to keep this one short, sweet, and to the point. Verizon sent me a couple of weeks ago the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. As with several of the previous generations of the Android operating system, Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0 is no different. Google has selected one device to be the ideal device, the one that really represents what they want to accomplish with that version. The Nexus, of course, like I said, is the one for Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0. The Motorola Zoom, I believe, was the one for Honeycomb. Uh, 2.0, I can't remember, I think it was the, the Galaxy One or the, the G1. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, haven't done the research on that particular one. But basically they pick one device that they consider the quintessential device for that generation. It sort of shows off what that generation is supposed to be capable of and then lets things build on top of that later on. Just going over the specs very quickly, it's a 4.65 inch display, 1280 by 720 pixel display, very high resolution, very nice. It has a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera that does 720p video and a rear-facing 5 megapixel camera that does 1080p video at 24 frames per second, which might not sound right to you if you're not into film and cinema and stuff, but that's actually what most cinematic cameras shoot at, somewhere around 24 frames per second. The camera I'm currently shooting on, I have a 24p mode that I do use pretty frequently. But the phone does have a 1.2 gigahertz TI OMAP dual-core processor, 1 gig of RAM, and Wikipedia has been kind of up and down on the space that it actually comes with. does not come with removable storage, but it's supposed to have either 16 or 32 gigs of built-in storage. The one that I was using had 32 gigs on it. They say that the 32 gig model is discontinued as of 2012, but I looked up on Verizon's site and they're still showing it having 32 gigs of built-in storage. So take that with a grain of salt and double check before you buy if you are interested. Additionally, it does have an 1850 milliamp hour battery if you're on the LTE version. I believe it's a little bit smaller on the GSM version. It's 1700 and something milliamp hours. The one that I was on did have 1850. And instead of having a traditional USB port, it does have an MHL port. So if you have the proper adapter, you can hook it up to an HDMI display. So basically you could take it and mirror your display up to a TV. I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube demonstrating that and using it with a Bluetooth keyboard mouse. Very interesting. I wish I had the hardware to demonstrate it, but I just don't. But that's pretty much it for the specifications. I believe the pricing over at Verizon's site is $299 on a two-year contract. I have seen it lower than that when they do have it on sale, so keep your eye out for that if you're interested. Other carriers should have it available. I don't believe they have it yet, though. So, some of the other ones in the U.S. are on their way to getting them, but Verizon is one of the first that did get their hands on it. In other countries, of course, that it varies by country, so check with your provider again if you're interested. But onward to the review. Basically, like I said, I had this device for about two weeks. I actually ended up sending it back just a couple of days ago, ran out of time with it and everything. Uh, very quick, very speedy, powerful device. Uh, it is only a dual-core processor, like I said, only. Uh, the quad-core processors are starting to come out now, but the Nexus was released early enough that it did not, did not have that. However, it does go very nicely to showcase that Ice Cream Sandwich runs very well with only two cores. The interface itself, very smooth, very speedy, worked very well out of the box. I didn't do any tweaking to it. Just like I've said in some previous reviews, when I have a review device, I don't normally root it. I don't put any other ROMs on it. I kind of wish I had in this case, though, because as with the previous Google devices, the ones that are, are more the uh, representative of the new generation, this one is one of the most hackable devices that, that you will see. Uh, there are tons of ROMs available for it. Uh, very quick and easy ways to root it. There are some other sites that have entire sections of their site devoted to just messing with the Galaxy Nexus. Uh, Droid Life, I know, has a huge section on that, so definitely head over to their site. I'll make sure to put a link down in the video description or on thisweekinlinux.com if you want to want to get some more information about that. In using it as a daily driver device, the one big issue I noticed with it was, of course, battery life. Uh, it says on their website that it's supposed to have 12 hours of continuous use or several days of standby time with average use. And I do mean average, like uh, checking the web, downloading some apps, uh, really not a whole lot more than that. I watched a little bit of YouTube video. Battery life was not good for me. I would uh, take it off the charger at about 7 o'clock in the morning, a little earlier than that, and by the time I, I would get home from work, it would be kind of low. It would be 15% and shortly thereafter, six, seven o'clock at night, so right at about the 12 o'clock or 12 hour time frame. And this is less than average use. This is relatively casual use. 
uh, it would it would die on me entirely. So I was I have to say I was a bit disappointed with it. And I do have a section later in the video that uh, I have another friend who has the Galaxy Nexus who has the same kind of issue, so it wasn't just the device I was on. Uh, from what I've read, there are some issues with the Galaxy Nexus in terms of uh, software that are causing battery issues, and some of the updates in the past have fixed it, and it looks like maybe that's kind of broken again. I think it's related to maps and wireless. Uh, maps automatically trying to update in the background, and wireless constantly searching for wireless in the background. I tried disabling the wireless and forcing the maps application to stop and didn't really have any effect for me, but it might just be the, the amount that I was using it. I mean, like I said, I used it for a little web browsing, a little video watching, a little app downloading, um, phone calls, of course, no text messaging, because I just don't really text message, emails, the, the average, average everyday user kind of stuff. And the battery life was just not very good for me. And of course, just so I don't forget the phone call quality, I, like I said, I used it for a daily driver device. I did lots and lots of phone calls on it in various places to various different providers. Call quality was okay. It wasn't extraordinarily clear. It wasn't really that quiet. Uh, drop calls, I didn't really have... I don't think I had any drop calls. If I, if I did, they were few and far between. Not enough for me to even uh, make note of it. Um, and actually, no, I think about it, I think I had one dropped call and it was because my wife was in a part of town that's kind of out in the boonies where there is no real service for any provider. So she, she went out in that direction and we lost service. She lost service. I did not. She was on a different device entirely anyway. Uh, that Other than that, pretty well average. Uh, not too staticky, not, you know, holy crap, this is clear kind of stuff. Uh, I've heard better, I've heard worse. So, middle of the road. The one other real complaint that I had about the device, and I do hate to complain about it because it was a very powerful, very speedy, very well put together device, was heat. And my, like I said, my friend has one. He has not had this problem, so maybe it was the one that I was using. But if I would try to do much of anything, if I would record a little video, watch, watch a video on YouTube, uh, download an app, anything that required more than just a few seconds of, you know, like open an email or something, that didn't do it. But anything else that I would do, the t top of the phone, right at the earpiece, would get hot. And I mean like burn you to the touch kind of hot. Uh, I was in the car with a friend driving to another city. We were doing some work for my day job. And I was, you know, browsing the web on it and checking some things out. I think I was, maybe I was doing GPS or something. It was something to that effect. And it started getting a little warm. And then I got a phone call from my wife. So I, or I called my wife, yeah. Um, put the phone up to my ear and I thought it was actually going to burn me. It was that hot. So that may be another thing to consider. It may just be the device that I was using. It, like I said, try it out in a store and see if it does that for you because you know you try it in the store, you're using somebody else's device, you're using somebody else's minutes. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, like I said, it may have just been the device that I was using. My friend said, has it, his wife has one as well. They've never experienced that. They get a little bit warm. Uh, my, my Droid X gets a little warm to the touch down here at the bottom. This one was getting hot up at the top. So, yeah, just, just be on guard with that. Uh, other than those two little issues for me, it worked beautifully. Very smooth, very fast. Uh, lots and lots of available applications in the Amazon, and the Android marketplace, excuse me, and the Amazon marketplace as well. Uh, I guess the Google Play Store is what they're calling it now. A and overall, I was very impressed with the device. Uh, I guess I should probably go over the camera quality as well because that's one of the, the touted features that they really go on about. They say that uh, the front-facing and rear-facing camera, 720p video on both of them, and 1080p on the rear-facing. Uh, I'll go, go ahead and give you a demonstration of both of those now. This is a test of the front-facing camera on the Galaxy Nexus. Not entirely sure where the microphones are, to be entirely honest. Uh, however, the video quality looks to be pretty good. I've tested this out a couple of times, and I believe the audio is pretty decent as well. I this is the rear-facing camera at 720p. This should be 30 frames per second if I'm not mistaken. I will double-check that and if I'm wrong I'll put a little annotation down at the bottom of the video. And this is the rear-facing camera at 1080p, supposedly 24 frames per second. Let me know what you think about this as well. The 24 frames per second is supposed to give it a little bit more of a cinematic look and feel, so it might be a little different than the previous two clips. And there you go. And to be entirely honest, I kind of think the video is a little bit jerky from time to time. Uh, I filmed a video at my, my new house just walking around holding the camera out in front of me using the front facing, and I couldn't upload it because it was just that jerky that I, I didn't want to put my, my viewers through that. 
so uh, again, I, I would say give it a shot and see if it works for you. If having a really high quality video camera is important to you in a phone, the, the video quality looks really good and the audio sounds really good, but in my opinion. But uh, the jerkiness, the frame rate seems a little stuttery to me. And that, that may just be me. Uh, let me know what you think about it, of course, in the comments down below. Speaking of the camera, though, one of the really cool features of Ice Cream Sandwich and of the Nexus in particular, I think this is going to be available on other ICS-based devices, but I know that the, the Nexus is one of the first ones to do it. It has a facial unlock feature, so you can uh, teach it what your face looks like and then use it to unlock the phone. I'm going to go ahead and show you the demonstration while I'm talking about it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you can, you can just point it at your face and it unlocks. The great thing about that is it keeps you from unlocking the phone while it's in your pocket. The bad thing is that it's very easy to fool. I wish that I had taken the time to make, make a video about this while I had it, but maybe I will with my friend's device here shortly. What you can do, uh, and uh, this has been documented a couple of months ago, this, I'm a little late on getting this device, but you can actually teach it your face, you know, and have that work as your unlock, and then point it at a picture of yourself, and that will unlock it as well. And being a, the person that I am, there are tons of videos of me out there, and pictures of me on Facebook, pictures of me on Google+. So if someone, if I had that device and someone got a hold of it, they could easily get into it if they knew who I was and knew it was my phone. Along the same lines, if they worked with you, like if a coworker found your device and you had pictures of yourself with your family in your office, you could just point it and say, unlock, and it would unlock. You don't even have to say anything, it just unlocks. Not the best security feature. I think it's more convenience feature than security, but from everything I've read about it online, it's a known flaw, and Google says, no, it doesn't work with pictures. It does. I'm sorry, it just does. And it's, it's kind of a flaw in the way that Ice Cream Sandwich works. Anyway, uh, I wish I had more to say about the device itself. I wish I'd had more time to work with uh, ROMs and with hacking it and rooting it and stuff like that, but it's not my device, so I can't really do that. If I can talk my friend into letting me uh, get my hands on his, maybe he'll let me, but that's his work device as well. Um, and talking about some other things in it, like I said, the performance is great. The, the gaming quality was just fine. I played uh, Minecraft for a little while on it. Minecraft was, was fine and smooth, just as smooth as any other device of this caliber. Uh, I played Asphalt 6, which is a racing game I picked up during the uh, the Google Tencent app sale a while back. That one played very smoothly, very nicely. Uh, I haven't tried to play it on any of my other devices yet, so I'm not sure about the comparisons, but played very well for me. Uh, and other than that, just everything I've done has been very smooth, very quick. Nothing has been laggy or hesitated or anything like that. Uh, the browser, of course, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not bad or different or anything. It's just a different layout than what I'm accustomed to running Gingerbread on my, my older phone. And the one last thing I'd like to talk about is NFC, but to do that, I'm going to have to jump back into the past when I look a little bit more shaggy, look a bit more like a lumberjack. And I'm actually with my friend John, who has the, the Galaxy Nexus as well. So I will kick it over to me from the past. And one of the big touted features of Ice Cream Sandwich and of the Nexus in general is near field communication. Basically a little bit of hardware built into the device to allow it to communicate with other near field enabled devices when placed in close proximity. And in order to demonstrate that I have with me John, who also has a Galaxy Nexus. And in order to beam things or near field communicate with another device, of course you have to have something ready on one device and then touch them like inappropriately. And you may not have heard that, but it made a weird little beepy sound. I didn't get anything that time. We'll have to try again. And you hear that? It made a little strange noise. If you could hear it over my wife and son upstairs making noise, uh, I now have the information. Near field communication, the NFC, is still kind of early technology, I guess. It's useful for beaming over things like contacts, links, uh, Facebook profile information, maybe Google Plus profiles, uh, just any sort of really short amount of information, not something large like a picture, video, music. Anyway, while we do have you here, John, before you were an iPhone user, you're now a Google Nexus owner running Ice Cream Sandwich. How's the transition been for you? Uh, this is my first experience with Android, but whenever I saw Ice Cream Sandwich previewed, that's really what got me to push my company to allow me to get an Android phone, and took a lot of teeth pulling, but I think all of them at work have been impressed too. Mm -hmm. Overall, I really like it. Uh, it's kind of hard to say how much I like from uh, just moving to Android in general, but I have a lot of Google products. 
I like it for the most part. Uh, it does have its drawbacks, though. Things like battery life being the most obvious, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, thumbs up. Okay. And one of the reasons I think you mentioned going to the Nexus specifically was the uh, the disk level encryption. Is that was that correct? Uh, well, th this is first Android phone I know of that doesn't have removable storage. That was one of my company's issues, ah. uh, and that uh, the storage in here is supposedly encrypted. I, you know, right. I haven't tested that out myself, but you know, with our wiping we were able to get it to wipe so. and it does allow the remote wipe through the uh, through the exchange server and it, it allows remote wipe through that and then also uh, exchange policy wiping okay. so like wrong passwords mm -hmm. well it's definitely an interesting first endeavor into the Android world and uh, hopefully you'll stick around if you like it if not there are of course other alternatives out there and a new phone comes out every other day or so well, thank you very much, John, for being here with us. Thank you for your help with the near-field communication talk. So back to the rest of the review. Now, the other really cool thing about NFC is not only, like I said, you can use it for beaming contacts and information, small amounts of information. You can also use it as a payment source. I think I might have mentioned that in the older clip, but uh, I, I took it to McDonald's. Of course, I'm, I'm a fatty, so I went to McDonald's with it. Uh, Google Wallet did not come on the device, but my friend showed me a way to get it on there. I managed to get Google Wallet on it. I loaded a prepaid card, and the prepaid card from Google Wallet comes with 10 bucks on it, so thumbs up for that. So uh, Google officially bought lunch for me and a coworker, which was awesome. Uh, and the, the lady at McDonald's was just blown away. You know, she thought I'd just swiped a card. And my coworker said, whoa, you paid with your phone? Because all you have to do is unlock it and hit the little, it's a Ma MasterCard PayPass thing. And you just tap it against it using the near field communication. You don't even have to have the app open. Uh, it'll pop up and ask for your PIN. You put that in and boom, you've paid. Uh, it gives you a little receipt on the phone, which is very cool. It's something they hadn't seen before, and apparently there are several places that are accepting it now. I think Wendy's and uh, Walgreens, Kroger, um, a few places but not a whole lot are starting to accept it. Uh, basically anywhere that MasterCard PayPass is accepted. You know, the, the little tiny card that's a credit card you can... Uh, uh, brain's not working at the moment. You can tap it instead of uh, scanning it and swiping it. It's convenience, I guess. It's nice to not have to have your, your wallet. But like I said before, if you uh, have the face unlock on it and someone knows what your PIN is, then you've immediately given them access to your bank account if you or your credit card, if you have your credit card tied to it. Or if you have a debit card preloaded, you give them basically your debit card. Not really a huge security issue there, but it could be. Someone would have to know who you are and know your PIN to really get into that. Uh, Anyway, I think that's about all I've got to say. I've rambled on and on, and this has probably been a 15-minute video so far. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time and your patience and your support. Uh, if you want to see what's been going on with me personally, check out my second channel, youtube.com slash twilltalks. I'll have a link to that in the video description. Uh, essentially, I bought a new house, and that's what I've been doing for the last month and a half or so is getting things worked on over there because it uh, it's a repossessed home and we're having to do tons and tons of repairs to it. But the amount of money we saved purchasing it uh, will make it more than worthwhile. So actually, if all works out according to plan, this may be one of the last videos shot in this space. I may be in the new space before too much longer because my new office is about to get, I'm about to paint my new office over there. Uh, we're gonna get some carpet in, get the, the ceilings and walls and everything painted and start moving in. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everything is well where, where you are, when you are. Uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.